Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be, presenting, to be presenting here today alongside some extremely talented people. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Joel Miller and I'm a product designer based in London and I'm working on design systems and developer tools here at Figma. And I'm feeling super grateful to be opening the conference for EMEA or what I like to call Skimia. Now, for the past eight months, I've been at Figma. I've been in the very lucky position to speak with folks like yourselves and get an insight into how leading companies are building design systems here at Figma. And each time I see a design system, I'm really inspired by the detail, structure, and nuance of each one. So today, I'm going to share some of those insights with you and hope that you also feel inspired. And I'm going to share design systems that I think display a great approach to three themes. Visual design, so taking a look at the details in components and design systems. Collaboration, so looking into how design system teams support their users. But what do you think the number one thing is that people speak about or ask about? Well, I recently had a conversation with our very own Louis, who is a design advocate, and he told me that he gets asked all the time, how do I structure my file in Figma? So let's see what some other companies are doing. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about structure is Shopify's Polaris. The design system that Polaris has done, that Shopify have done, sorry, is a brilliant structure and it's one that we speak of highly at Figma and it's for good reason. What makes this design system so great is that it's optimized for the end user. So first of all, styles, typography, Components are all really well structured into multiple files, which are really easy to navigate and to manage. And if we take a look at the components file, you can see that all of them are really well organized alphabetically and in separate pages. Each component has a really detailed description in the properties panel. And there's also links that go to the documentation website. And one thing that I find really successful about this design system is the likeness to the documentation website. So there's like a common visual language, the structure is very similar, and it makes it really easy for anyone consuming the file. And an even more brilliant detail is that the prop names in Figma are also really consistent with those used in code. So you can imagine how easy it is for designers and developers to collaborate within this system. Now, another more detailed example comes from ABB. So ABB is a design systems team with 10 designers, and they serve over 30 teams and 120 editors. And a design system that serves a company of this size needs to be quite robust and probably quite detailed. So ABB have taken an approach of having one file per component. And within that, there's about 12 to 13 pages per file. And there's a couple of pages that really stand out to me that I'd like to talk about. First of all, the reference page. So this is a page where designers at ABB gather and document learnings from other design systems. And they'll use this page to understand if they're doing best practice or if there's things that they can learn from other design systems and other companies to improve their own system. Now, when I'm doing the design process, this is something that I tend to do outside of the, des of the design system. I always have a page with competitor research or things like that. And I think it's really interesting to bring this inside the design system so that you always have a reference of resources. Another page that ABB does really well is the sandbox page. And this is a place for designers to be exploratory within the design system. So here, designers can experiment with components in a really scrappy way, as you would with a typical Figma file. Now, when we think of design systems, we might think of rules and structure, and that can be seen as something that might restrict creativity. So having a sandbox page that breaks that notion is great because it's within the design system, which has rules. Now, I'm all for rule breakers within design, so this is one of my favorite pages. Now, not every single design team can manage 12 to 13 pages per component. It's quite a lot of work. So let's look at another example from a smaller design systems team. 
On Fido, use AI technology to help businesses verify identity. And they have a much smaller design systems team than ABB. So they need a completely different approach when it comes to structuring design systems within Figma. Um, one problem that the team faced was designers making contributions to the design system. It was a lengthy process and it could cause some designers to get blocked, which meant that products didn't get shipped as quickly as possible. So Onfido developed a really clever approach to tackling this issue. Instead of using the core library within Figma, the product teams used UI kits. And this allowed the design system squad to give product teams autonomy and ownership of their own UI kit. Then they could then provide guidance and help when needed. So instead of making contributions to the core library, teams contribute to a UI kit. And then the design system squad would use Figma's design system analytics to search for commonalities in all of the UI kits and then sort of assess what should be added to the design system in the future. So I think this is a really great approach to manage a large design system with a small design system team. Now, this next theme is really important to me because about four years before I started working in tech, I actually had a background in graphic design. I used to work at a pretty small design agency called MASH, which is based here in London. And during my time there, we worked on a lot of brand identity, mainly for professional services and even some early stage startups. And I think this is where my appreciation for design systems actually started. One of my favorite things to do was to create brand guidelines. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is basically a document that tells you all the things that you can't do with a logo. For example, don't remove the smile from the Amazon logo. Don't add anatomy to the Twitter logo. Don't add a mustache to the LinkedIn logo. Don't add a mustache to the Lyft logo. And most importantly, don't remove the mustache from the KFC logo unless it's November. It also contains more useful information, such as logo sizes, typography, color palettes, margin sizes, etc. And it's essentially a design system for a brand. And one thing I love the most about brand guidelines is that they break down an identity to its raw elements. So you can understand how something is constructed and composed. And as a designer, this is amazing because it teaches you how to craft something of the same quality. And like brand guidelines, one thing I appreciate when looking at design system files in Figma is the visual design details when it comes to crafting components. So one example I would like to share with you is actually part of our own design system, UI2. So a bit about UI2. It was created in 2019 as a visual refresh to UI1. So our design system is a little bit scrappier than some of the previous examples I've shown, but the foundations that it's built upon are extremely solid. Now, when I first started working at UI at Figma, one of the things that I really wanted to understand was the structure behind the properties panel in detail. And luckily for me, this was really easy to do. In our design system, there's clear explanations behind the underlying structures of components. So did you know that Figma uses an eight-point grid? Well, that's actually probably not that surprising. Uh, but did you know that most elements use a power of two number? So a power of two number is really useful because it can be evenly divided over and over, and it composes like Lego. So in UI2, we have clear explanations of how this works, like in this diagram. So for someone like me onboarding onto a new design system, this is incredibly useful because I immediately get a sense of how things are constructed. So if you're like me, you might have always questioned, like, how is this properties panel designed? With so many constraints, yet somehow it all magically fits together and it all magically aligns. And the reason for this is because the properties panel has a really strict set of rules that it follows. And in UI2, we use something called edge alignment and spine alignment. So, Edge alignment is when the edge of items align up along the same line. 
spinal alignment is when the center of items line up along the same line. And in our properties panel, you can see that it uses both edge and spine alignment. So the pink lines are marked uh, as the edge alignment zones and the blue lines are marked as the spine alignment zones. And you can also see that we use something called rails. So in our properties panel, we have 32 wide common column rails. And here you can see how the alignment tools at the top of the properties panel align with controls and icons in other sections. Now, I think it's really important to show these details within a design system, because if you want designers to contribute successfully, they need to know the visual rules behind the components. So one thing about me is that I absolutely love to design icons. Whenever someone asks me to riff on an icon design in one of the design critiques at Figma, I jump on the, at the opportunity and I end up doing something like this. And in UI design, icons need to be really robust and hardworking. As UIs have evolved, we've become more reliant on icons as forms of communication and affordance. And these days, they need to work in various different contexts, such as filled, outline, light, and dark. Therefore, the construction of the icon needs to have really solid foundations behind it. And others that are working with those icons, they need to understand the foundations too in order to contribute to them successfully. And one company that does this really well is Microsoft. So not only does Microsoft Fluent provide an extensive range of icons with different themes and an unbelievable amount of variants, they also provide fantastic documentation. There's a guidelines page that talks through all of the design considerations and principles. There's guides for badging, cutouts, optical alignment, alignment, and I think it's brilliant. The level of detail on this is honestly amazing. And if you're ever designing icons, I really strongly recommend that you check this out on the community. Now, when we talk about design systems, sometimes we can get a bit too focused on these visual details and we can easily forget about one of the main factors which makes a design system successful, and that is collaboration. So according to the 2021 Design System Survey by Sparkbox, 42% of design system managers said that adoption was at the top priority. 83% of those design system managers found that their design system was unsuccessful so collaboration across design systems is clearly a challenging problem. And here's some examples of what others are doing to address those problems. So Zalando is Europe's leading platform for fashion and lifestyle. And they have multiple design systems that serve various different platforms. Collectively, the design system has over 1,100 1, components, 160 styles, 50,000 inserts a week, which is a crazy amount. And the design system seems to support 44 plus teams across the company. So you can imagine they have quite a lot of instances in Figma. So in order for this design system to be successful, Zalando has taken a unique approach of collaboration over components. And Zalando's design system team does a really brilliant job of providing self-service resources. So they have libraries of tutorials, workshops, and documentation, all to help reduce reliance on the design systems team. And the best thing about this is that each tutorial is tailored to a specific audience. So if you're a designer, an engineer, or a product manager, you can get the exact answer that you need presented in a way that you'll understand. The design systems team has also developed a thing called a starter file source of truth. So this is essentially a Figma file that comes complete with documentation, guidelines, components, variants, state, usage, everything you can think of. So providing teams with a file already set up like this, it actually enables them to focus on solving customer problems rather than trying to set up some workflows. And I think it's a really brilliant way to support designers and just uh, help them with efficiency. Another company that has done something quite similar with onboarding is VC. 
So BT have created a customized tutorial which talks through the component and variant features of Figma. And the clever part of this is that they've actually tailored it to their own design system. So there's some real life examples of their components in there. And this is something that you can do quite easily too. So our design advocates, Louis and Tom, have actually created a variance playground and you can remix that file and provide some really quick onboarding to your team. Now, one final highlight is Spotify. So they have created this brilliant ways of working document, which describes how Spotify have shaped Figma to suit their needs and their culture. And I think it's a really great resource for any design teams looking for inspiration on how to work within Figma. Now, before I wrap up, there is one more theme that I really wanted to include. And this theme is just gonna be full of fun, random things to spice up your design life. It's purely subjective and it's purely based on my personal opinion. So if you don't agree, I'll try my best not to take it personally, but I'm calling this theme Cool AF or Cool as Fig. So first up is Pablo Stanley's Open Peeps. So this is an open source illustration library full of people where you can create endless combinations of unique illustrations. There are loads of different body types, as you can see, there's incredible amount of facial expressions that you can use and adapt, uh, some great color palettes in there. The variety is honestly incredible. So shout out to Pablo for this coolest fig library. The next one I've found is this React library in the style of Windows 95. So Gabriel Daltoso has created this. And the thing that I love about this is that you can create some really retro look looking UI using modern, like a modern design tool uh, and use things like variant and auto layout to sort of arrange it. And personally, I've always wanted to know how to design a button in a 16-bit style. And now I can dive into this file and I can nerd out on the layer structure, which I think is cool as fig. Now, the next one is my personal favorite. So do you ever get bored of using your colleagues' faces in avatars? Well, now you don't have to because Martin Mertrot has created rap avatars. So now you can switch up Jenny for Jay-Z, you can switch Dylan for Drake, and Yuki for Young Thug. And I think this is cool as Fig, so I'm going to give it extra lit points. So that's all I have to say for today. So let me leave you with some passing thoughts. Um, so one thing that I realized when I was prepping for this talk is that not one design system is the same. Each one is focused on different areas. Some have highly complex structures that need to serve teams and consumers across the world. Some have incredibly intricate visual design detail that require well-communicated documentation for others to be able to contribute to it. And some others have amazing support systems to help improve collaboration and increase education. But no matter what the focus is, there's something inspirational in each one that we can all learn from. And that's the great thing about today. We're all sharing ideas and opinions so we can all have better design systems. Well, at least in Skamir. Thanks everyone for taking the time to hear me speak today. If you ever want to chat about Figma, design systems, or mustaches and logos, feel free to reach out to me at Joel at Talks Design on Twitter. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the conference. I hope you have a great day.